I forgot to do a little bit of uh, winter prep on my generators and stuff. Uh, all my small engine stuff. You can see the shed got filled up pretty good with all the summertime outside stuff. So, uh, ooh, extra dryer right there. Up here, you can buy uh, ethanol free gas right at the. There's a couple of stations that sell it. They're just like kind of small time gas stations. Look at that. Plate steel. Fix my trailer. Um, so, you know, well, I don't know if you know, but in today's gas that you buy at the pump, it's got ethanol in it. And, uh, it's not good to uh, let that sit over uh, several months because it um, turns to dust and it does a number on rubber fuel lines and uh, especially small engine stuff like lawn mowers, snow blowers, generators, and also uh, the old stuff. The, um, the rubber uh, fuel lines and seals in the carburetors and stuff on the older vehicles uh, it doesn't like that ethanol I mean it's fine if you run it every day but um, you know it's not good to sit after a while it'll uh, create all sorts of problems so they sell like I said the ethanol free it's a little more obviously it's like a it's, it's more octane too, I think it's like 93, um, they have some that are different, depends where you go, but what I was aiming to do is um, run the generators right out of gas and stuff, and the lawnmower, you know, um, just run them till they run right out, and then, because I just have regular gas in those right now, um, didn't really use my brand new uh, Predator from Harbor Freight. It's an inverter generator and uh, obviously I use that for the RV and it runs everything, it runs the AC and stuff when you're going down the road but anyway I had regular gas in there and uh, I meant to come in here and fire everything up and, um, you know, let it run right out, and then fill it up with the uh, ethanol-free, let it run, so that's in there, and then uh, there's a little battery right there, it's got electric start, and uh, take that battery out, bring it inside, keep it warm, because um, last winter I left it in there, and it did go dead, but I put it on the trickle charger, and it came right back, so... It's uh it's still good. <clears throat> and then uh back here I have this uh not even sure what the brand is on it anymore. So long since I looked at it. Oh got a uh, Tecumseh 8 horsepower, so um, uh, here we go, oh yeah it's a Coleman, 4000 watt, and uh, this generator is like a real loud one, you know, it's like one that you would have at a job site or, you know, out back of your house or your cabin in the woods, uh, you know, sitting way out back in a shed or something away because, you know, it's noisy. But it's, uh, it's a hell of a generator. And as you can see, it's basically brand new. Um, story behind this one. I got this. I worked at a repair shop. Um, started off just helping 
part-time turned into a full-time mechanic and uh, that was before I moved that I worked there and it was Christmas time and my boss you know I didn't know whether I was going to get any sort of a Christmas bonus I mean didn't really expect it but he ended up I had seen this sitting in the corner of his shop I asked about it a few times what he was doing with it so he decided to uh, give it to me he said there you go on uh he goes whenever we you know the last day of work before Christmas was <clears throat> he said why don't you throw that in your truck Merry Christmas so the story behind it was a lady that he knew that he worked on her cars and stuff for she had a house um kind of out in the a, a rural part of uh the state and the power went out a lot in the house and she wanted a generator that um was wired right in so that if she lost power she could just start it and be all set so she bought this brand new and she had an electrician wire this cord which um I'm assuming plugged right into her uh, electric box uh, of her house. It sat in the basement. And um, anyway, she was under the impression that it was an electric start where you just press a button and it starts. And it's not. You have to pull it. So it sat for a long time in the basement. And uh, it was getting, it was a real bad winter, I guess, and she had her son, she said, well, he was over, she said, why don't you go down there and uh, just make sure my generator runs good uh, before the storm, so that way I know I'm all set, just start it up and let it warm up. Well, he went down and he was pulling and pulling and pulling away, and she said, what are you doing down there? And he said, I'm trying to start it, and she said, just press the button. And he said, what are you talking about? There's no electric start on this. So she got mad. And uh, I guess the people that delivered it and hooked it up for her lied. Or it was a misunderstanding. So she said, I don't want this. So she bought, she got one of those fancy big Generac ones that, you know, sits outside in the box and it's all hooked up. And she let this sit down there the basement for a long time and like I was saying about the ethanol gas it what happened was is it screwed up the carburetor so I took it and uh, I took that bowl off the float bowl and it was actually full of green dust which that's what happens to that fuel when it gets old and um, I ordered that carburetor on Amazon. I think it was eight dollars. I bolted that on. I put fresh gas in, and I pulled it twice, and it started and ran like new. And I plugged a bunch of stuff into it, and it made power and everything like it's supposed to. So I said, "Well." kind of a nice thing to have and uh, I decided to just keep it and just keep it for that rainy day especially with uh, moving up north I figured that with the harsh winters that the power would be going out quite a bit so I figured I'd hold on to it, but turns out don't lose power too often, only for maybe 5-10 uh, minutes at a time, usually it comes right back on, but um, my, uh, my old boss had wanted me to use it for the camper you know, mount it on the back and use it for that, but I explained to him that, you know, I go to campgrounds and state parks, they don't 
they don't allow noisy generators and you wouldn't want to use it anyway because you're just going to piss people off. You know, it's just going to be too loud. I mean, you're not going to sit around the campfire. Or, you know, you're not going to be sleeping in there and at night and have this thing roaring away. So, I don't know. He didn't really get it, but he thought that, you know, he was doing something good anyway by giving that to me and that I could use it. But, um... Not long after that, I uh, purchased the Predator, which is uh, very quiet compared to a, a Honda. You know, they, they run them side by side, and uh, it's uh, some say it's even quieter than the Honda. But um, I got it on sale, I think, for, I think it was around 700 when I bought it, and, uh, anyway, so we got to start these up, and, uh, let them run out of gas as much as I can anyway, and, uh, get, you know, throw as much as that ethanol free in as I can, the Predator especially, um, I don't know, if I don't get all of it out of the other one, I don't really mind. It's, uh, I know that that carburetor is $8 and uh, not a big deal. If I got to replace that another day, but um, and that's just sort of a back burner in case, you know. Eventually, I, I would like to figure out how to get it so that it, it does plug right into the house and... Um, if I ever needed to, you know, I could just fire it up and uh, still have power, but whatever. It's got this uh, economy throttle, too. Kind of like after you get it going, you, you turn that on and it puts it down to a real low idle so it doesn't use a lot of fuel. But being an inverter generator, it doesn't rev up high when it's using power. Um, it just stays at a steady RPM, which is nice. And uh, this is a digital readout. It shows you some stuff that's going on. You get a couple of plugs. Um, you got. You can hook up this. It's like a. If you want to run something at 12 volt. And then I have an adapter that plugs in here, locks in, and that uh, is like a 30 amp for the RV. So I'm just gonna put it to uh, put it to start. Basically, that's choke, and that's all they give you is one little setting of that. We'll see what happens. got this little space heater I'm gonna plug into it because you uh, with a generator you don't want to just start it up and let it run that's not good enough you gotta you, they call it exercising the generator so you have to run it with something plugged into it so that it's working and it's exercising itself because if you don't it'll go bad and all the stuff inside will go bad so at least once a month you should you should run it with something plugged in for at least a half an hour or so and uh, that'll keep everything working good
turn this on. This is my uh, little Chinese GoPro. I know the sound is uh, not as great as a real one, but um, it's a lot cheaper, so I deal with it. But that's, uh, you know, obviously it's sitting inside the shed, but you can see uh, it's a pretty quiet generator anyway. So got that space heater drawing some volts on it and uh, I don't know how much fuels in it that's one thing they didn't do is uh, they didn't put a I wish they had to put a fuel gauge I think the newer models they they did that but um, there's no fuel gauge it's on a full tank it's supposed to run for uh, eight hours depending I think it's 8 to 11 hours depending on what you have running and uh, obviously if you had the rooftop AC going on the old RV and stuff um, and then you know lights and whatever is going on inside probably uh, use a little more fuel. I've never used it more than uh, a couple hours you can see it only has 18 hours on it and uh, there's a page on uh, Facebook dedicated to the Predator 3500 that people show all sorts of little mods and problems. They share, you know, stuff that's happened to theirs or whatever. But people got a, thousands and thousands of hours on these things. So still pretty much brand new. I'm just trying to keep it. So that it's always good to go. This, uh, it appears that I got a lot of gas in this, and uh, as you can see, that's a pretty big tank. So I think what I'm going to do with this one. Fuel line's very uh, accessible. It's got a little shut off right there, a little knob. I think I'm just going to take this line off right here and uh, drain it out into a gas can. There's no sense in running it for uh, for that. It's going to take a long time to empty that tank, so I'll drain as much as I can out and then. Uh, I'll add some of the ethanol free and I'll run it for a bit, plug something in and uh, it'll be good to go, be, well, be good to sit.
very good looking gas anyway. Got a little bit of yellow to it. So, probably a good thing. Get it drained out of there. that off for a second. Still running strong. So we got about uh, four gallons of radioactive horse piss out of that, out of this one here. Got it all drained out. Now we got the good stuff. Put a couple gallons of this in. Nice and clear. Come on. What are you doing? Let's do that. Why is that moving? Getting a kick out of that, huh? Hit the switch to engine run. The old manual choke on it. See what happens.
what I mean how that's a little loud. A little loud for a campground, but you could uh, definitely power a lot of stuff with that. So we just uh, shut the fuel off so that it empties everything out of the carburetor. Nothing sitting in there. It's got the fresh, uh, nice gas in it. Now I can put it away. It's all ready to go for that special day that you need it. A little belt full of good stuff. Oh boy, I found the side of the road. Giving it away. Been using it a couple of years. There you go. There's your little uh, lesson for the day. Maybe uh, it was helpful, interesting, I don't know. But figured I'd show you. And uh, you know, you do little things like that, keeps your stuff nice, you know. Um, don't be a cock. Don't be a shitter and just, uh, you know, put your stuff away and then just forget about it. Do a couple of things. Spend a few minutes. Put some stabilizer in there. Some fresh gas. Run it every now and then. The, uh, The stuff will last, and then when you go to take it out, and you go to have fun and go camping or do something in the yard or what, whatever it is, you're gonna you gotta be cursing because the stuff's not gonna start. And uh, maybe maybe you're a millionaire and you can just go out and buy a new one. That's what some people do, but if you like me. What I've learned is keep the stuff nice, keep it going.